Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on taking isolated vocal tracks of some of the most epic, legendary pieces of music of all time. Next up is Hall & Oates. Daryl Hall is the singer, obviously. The song is called Sarah Smile. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. I have a singing course if you guys are interested in wanting to learn how to sing or you're a medium grade singer or an advanced singer. Uh, you can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, where I also have a free singing forum over there with about 25,000 singers all talking about how to get great at singing. Okay, now I want to say some things about this tune. I did a version of it. I'll put it in the description. You can see how I did. I didn't do that great of a job. Most of the stuff I feel like I did a really good job. Um, this one is just kind of schmeh for me. Uh, so you can schmeh me if you want when you go listen to it in the description. But um, the reason I feel that I didn't is because Daryl is so unique in the way he sings, not just his phrasing, not just his mixed voice, not just his falsetto, but his sensitivities in his phrasing and also just his personality. And let me explain what I mean by this. If I were to sing most rock anthems, a Bon Jovi song or a Def Leppard's or you know, whatever it is, right? My 80s rock anthem, 90s anthem, or I'll kind of even, even, even a big ballad or something for Whitney Houston. No, that's a bad example because she does have a lot of trills and stuff. But anyway, just something that's, you know, kind of on the square, on the dotted line. It's not that hard for me to sing. I can got, dissect it, memorize it, kind of get pretty doggone close, and, and I'm good to go. I remember when I was doing this tune and I'm going, this is really hard. It reminded me when I tried to do George Michael too. I did. I did done a couple. Um, my George Michael things like Freedom ninety, for example, and and I and I was attempting to do this, and I went, you know, it's kind of like singing Al Green or something. I'm like, I'm just not going to be that good at his sound. I'm just going to have to sound more like me in the song. So I've done that with Donny Hathaway, which is true. Like I said, Al Green. You know, I've done you know a, a few artists like that, and this is one of those artists where when you're trying to imitate or em now. It's good to get the influence of it, and it's good to attempt it and try it, but I don't pretend that I'm that good at it, okay? I just pretend that I understand it. Maybe if I just sat there forever, and this is true for Stevie Wonder, I don't care who it is with this kind of phrasing and sensitivity, but I, so I really wanna focus on that as we're going through this and take a real close, you know, microscopic listen to this. Check it out. Baby hair with a woman's eyes. Now, you're right, baby hair with a woman's eyes. Yeah, I can get all the notes. Yeah, I can sing it in pitch. Yeah, I could get some mixed voice together. But it's like he's talking to you. Imagine this for a second, okay? Let's say I'm saying to you, hey guys, how you guys doing today? I'm Ken Tamplin, blah, blah, blah. I got the this, I'm doing that. And I, man, I just can't wait until you do that. Right? And I, I say this, this phrase, and now it's your job to play that back and match the inflections and everything the way, and this is even more intense because it's really sensitive, but it's your job now to match that exactly. And you're gonna go, I can't do that. That's you talking. I'm not, how am I supposed to sound exactly like you and not mess up? Exactly. So when a piece of music is written and it's kind of written out and you know, Pete Ellis Dodge, Long Beach Freeway, Firestone Exit, Southgate, right? There's that and then there's this, okay? So check it out again. Baby hair. With a woman's eyes, I can feel you watching in the night. Cool. Now I got to bring the track in because you could go, well, I, I can do that. I can do that. No, you can't. <laughs> you can try, but check it out with the track. How sexy this is with the track. Baby hair with a woman's eyes, I can feel you watching in the night. Okay, now let me point to now. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it for a second. So I'm gonna go. Baby ham with a woman's eyes. I can see you watching in the night. Right? Now what happened was I missed how he hesitates on some parts, how he pushes something else, how he's keep, he comes back, you know, he's really a piano on it, and then he comes forte, and then he comes piano, or, you know, crescendos and diminuendos back and forth, and he is, I can see you watching in the night, right? And he's just got all this stuff going on, you're like, he's in the moment, man. He's like, he's singing to this girl, and he means it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm gonna put the track back in. With a woman's eye. All alone with me, I'm away 
waiting for the sunlight. So hide. Right, he's just okay. I get it. I get it. No wonder he was like the king of blue-eyed soul. That was sort of one of his claims to fame early on. So let's continue. Whoops. Here we go. When I feel cold, you warm me. And when I feel I can't go on, you come and hold me. It's you and me forever. Sarah. Did you guys get all that? Did you hear how sexy that was? Did you hear how sexy that was? I mean, that was sexy. <laughs> Check this out. Now listen to it with a band. It's one thing to hear it alone and it's cool, but the way it sits in the track and Clarence who played in this, God rest his soul, he's no longer with us, who's playing the keys on this. Wow. It's just nobody's stepping on anybody and everybody's giving everybody space to be sexy. <laughs> right? Check this out. When I feel cold, you warm me. And when I feel I can't go on You come and hold me It's you and me forever If you feel like leaving, you know you can go. Now, in this section here, I felt like, okay, I think I can fake this part. If you feel like leaving, you know you can go. Why don't you wait until tomorrow? Right? Because he's a little more straight on the groove on it. Check it out. So, if you feel like leaving, you know you can go but why don't you stay until tomorrow until he gets there why don't you stay until tomorrow and he's got oh he's got these little trills at the end that you, you know you're gonna have to memorize those too right if you wanna be free you know if you wanna be free Right, that great control and mixed voice. So guys, when you're doing this, I want you to really try to kind of stay on the head voice side the whole time. If you wanna be free, right, uh, uh, free, all you've got to do, darling, is say so, right? So try to get like, uh, Try to go in and out of chest and head with mixes. If you wanna be free, right? Get in and out of that space with a lot of mixed voice, and then you'll kind of get close to the sound. But if you don't and you try to muscle through it, you'll never make it. It'll just be, you'll be too thick on the bottom. You'll over bloat the bottom, and you won't be able to get through the passaggio with that kind of sensitivity and going to head voice with that kind of sensitivity as well. If you wanna be free, you know, all you got to do. You say so. So good. <sighs> and when you feel cold, I warm you. And when you feel you can't go on, I come and hold you. It's you and me forever. Sarah's he always said, you know, those kinds of things at the end too. Now, I can only imagine the guy that did the tracking uh, engineering for this, for the vocal, must have driven him nuts. He had to probably use at least at least two compressors. So he probably used one that was real up front, and then when he leans into the, hey, you know, kind of leans into it, he used one on the backside to grab anything that was too big or too loud so they could have a mean average and everything kind of sound really smooth. Because it's really hard to track something like this, man. Let me tell you. I want you smile for me, Sarah. Sarah, smile. Hey. I won't smile. 
Now we gotta put this track back in, man, because you gotta hear how this is how this phrasing is going against the track. Oh, won't you smile and laugh with me, Sarah? Uh, Sarah, smile. Oh, won't you smile and So good. Gosh, man. I think this, uh, I heard it said about, <laughs> I've been waiting for a girl like you, uh, but I think this song also increased the population of planet Earth significantly. <laughs> So good. <laughs> Makes me sweat just thinking about it. <laughs> anyway, gang, hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it and the information. And we're all learning together. I'm still learning. Every time I listen to these tracks, I'm just wowed. I am just, no wonder this track has been around for so long. And no offense, no wonder new songs just kind of come in and out real quickly without the staying power, the legendary staying power of a tune like this. But anyway, thank you for joining me. For joining me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. That'd be really cool. If you're interested in singing, check out my singing course and definitely check out my next video.